People look at the oddest places for inspiration when inventing new methods of construction. Geodesic domes were inspired by crystals and snowflakes. Cargo containers and shipyards are converted into tiny homes. And mushrabiya screens are inspired by calligraphy. Who would have thought that sandbags could also be inspirational? They were originally used for flood control and military bunkers, but they have now been adapted for home construction. The bags are made of natural materials like hemp or burlap, or more durable synthetic materials like polypropylene, which is water, rot, and insect resistant. These bags are filled with earth with a mixture of 70% sand and 30% clay and are stacked to make a house. The most common structures look like big beehives or igloos as the curved walls provide good lateral stability. The system has no tensile strength so the structures must be built into compression forms like domes and arches. However, they could take on other forms like straight walls if they are topped with conventional roofs. There are several ways to add structural support to the system. Barbed wire is placed between the courses to improve friction between the bags and provide shear resistance. Twine can also be wrapped around the bags to tie one course to the next. Rebar can be hammered into the walls to strengthen corners and openings. Form work is required to frame out the door and window openings. The structure is typically finished with plaster, either a cement stucco on mesh or an adobe or lime plaster. This plaster finish sheds water and prevents UV damage of the fabric. The earliest version of earthbag homes can be traced to Gernom Minke, a German professor who helped build a prototype house in 1978 in Guatemala. He used cotton bags soaked in lime wash to protect the material from rot and insects and he filled the bags with pumice, a lightweight volcanic rock that is a local material with superior thermal insulation properties. Vertical bamboo poles were placed on both sides of the bags and interconnected with wire loops which provided extra stability. The bamboo rods were fixed to the foundation and the horizontal tie beam at the top. The ultimate cost was half that of a CMU blockhouse. However, the earth bag home movement gained momentum thanks to Nader Khalili, an Iranian architect. He established the California Institute of Earth Art and Architecture in Hesperia. He believed that the idea could be mass-produced because sand is available to almost everyone. His first sandbag home was built using 60-pound rice bags filled with pure earth. The material was untapped and unstabilized, and each bag was individually sewn shut. On later projects, he began stacking the sandbags like bricks, using barbed wire as kind of a motor. Eventually, Khalili developed and patented the Super Adobe building system, which uses mile-long fabric tubes that can be pumped full of soil and laid in coils to create a structure. He envisioned these structures providing temporary housing in case of natural emergencies or for low-cost housing. His most popular design is the Ecodome, a 400-square-foot structure that was featured on HDTV. The main dome is 15 feet in diameter with 15-inch thick walls. The dome has passed all structural building codes and has been permitted and built in various locations around the world, including Oman, Venezuela, Australia, Japan and Colombia, among others. One of Khalili's most radical proposals was the use of earth bags on the moon. It is extremely expensive to transport building materials from the earth to the moon, so he proposed using local materials like moon dust. He presented this idea to NASA and built a prototype lunar colony in Hesperia. The Khalili family passionately believes that super adobe homes can help solve the shortage of housing around the world. They run several training programs at the institute and organize online courses on the art of super adobe building. So let's cover the advantages of these earth bag homes. First off, both the earth and the polypropylene or even the burlap bags are cheap. Also, you don't need a large experienced crew on site, which cuts down on your construction and contracting costs. 
other than the synthetic bags and the barbed wire which holds the bags together earth pack building is a natural building method that doesn't use other resources like wood or metal unless you have door frames or additional steel support as for structural integrity these houses seem to withstand seismic wind and snow loads they apparently also survive fires and floods and hurricanes and that's because even though these bags might burn away the earth is compacted over time and it creates a solid structure also if the house is properly plastered it will keep out mold and insects and even rodents another advantage is their thermal mass since earth pack walls are greater than 12 inches thick there is a 12 hour delay between the time the wall heats up and when it releases the heat so it is best used in areas where there's a significant temperature difference between the day and the night assuming that the soil on your lot is a good mix of sand and clay you are using local materials the carbon footprint of your construction is going to be lowered because you aren't transporting construction materials to your site now the disadvantages first off the shape of the structure earth pack domes are the most structurally sound but it is difficult to use that interior space efficiently when all the walls are curved all your furniture and your finishes have to be custom made and generally speaking custom products are more expensive than standardized ones size is another concern the maximum recommended diameter of earth pack homes is 20 feet or 6 meters however you can connect these homes together or build underground to increase the building's footprint you obviously aren't going to be framing out the inside of these structures so are your pipes and your cables and your ductwork going to be exposed we also have to think about the financial aspect of this house if you are going to be taking out a loan there's a strong chance that you won't be approved for this kind of building with no precedent in the area because your lender can't estimate the home's value tied to this is the unpredictable resale value of the house on the structural side you must be careful not to use biodegradable materials like leaves when you are filling the bags up with earth because these will disintegrate and leave gaps in your walls causing them to become unstable also if the sand to clay ratio on your site is an ideal which it probably won't you will have to truck in mounds of dirt to your site in texas for example where i live the soil has a very high percentage of clay earth pack homes are also very labor intensive all the precedents that i have looked at use manual labor to compress the soil into the bags and stack them when you aren't using power tools and prefabricated standard parts your construction time is significantly higher finally the cynical side of me questions the scalability of this kind of model and how much of an impact it is really going to make in the construction industry it's a potential solution for disaster shelters and temporary housing but it is difficult to mass produce these homes because of all the reasons that i mentioned if 0.01% of the population does build this way 99.99% of the population isn't so there isn't going to be an overall positive environmental impact i think it is much more intelligent to invent methods and materials that can be applied to mass produced homes because those will have a greater impact on our environment is there a way that we can convert the earth on all construction sites into standardized building blocks irrespective of their sand and clay content or is that just a pipe dream let me know what you think about earth pack homes and if there are any pros and cons that i missed if you visited the institute in hesperia leave me a comment below don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching see ya